watch it here. Oh, okay. Star Wars Day, everyone. Today is also my birthday. And because it's my birthday, birthday, and because it's my birthday, I get to introduce you. One today is also my birthday. And because it's my birthday, I get to introduce you. Everyone, today is also my birthday. And because it's my birthday, today is also my birthday. And because it's my birthday, I get to introduce you. Also my birthday. And because it's my birthday, I get to introduce you to my girlfriend. <laughs> Marcus, you don't want to do this. Let her go. My girlfriend. A man is currently holding his girlfriend hostage. Police are outside of his home. Holding his. Have you seen oh this? My. Yeah, I've, you... seen, I've seen those kind of TikTok. Yeah, it's fucking hilarious. That's okay, I'll play this one more time. Isn't girlfriend it? hostage. Police are outside of his home. <laughs> this guy, that Star Wars Day, makes a video with his, his guess it's his girlfriend. Happy Star Wars Day, everyone. Today is also my birthday. And because it's my birthday, birthday, and because it's my birthday, I get to it's introduce you. And today is also my birthday. <laughs> and because it's my birthday, I get to introduce everyone. Today is also my birthday. <laughs> and because it's my birthday, today is also my birthday. And because it's my birthday, I get to introduce also my birthday. Right now, and because it's my birthday, I get to introduce you to my girlfriend. <laughs> Marcus, you don't want to do this. Let her go. My girlfriend. A man is currently holding his girlfriend hostage. Police are outside of his home. Holding his girlfriend hostage. Police are outside of his home. <laughs> the last one. The last one. I have no idea what was going on with the dude. Yeah. The, so the shirtless his, guy. They lost yeah, me there. So who's who's uh who's who's that guy that's saying it's my birthday? Who is it? I haven't. I haven't. I mean, I'm assuming he's doing some kind of. YouTube or something, that's or a TikTok funny. video or some live. It's like a live stream. Dude, that's so so hilarious. <laughs> that's one of the funniest things I've seen. God damn. They got the continuity. I mean, it just it was perfect. Everything looked like it matched up. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. It's pretty one good. person, super clever. Yeah. And see this, saw that, and got that started. They were like, "Oh, that dude's face. I know what I'm gonna do with that." You I'm know, gonna, that's not that. Uh, uh, you remember in um, elementary, or I think it was elementary. You know, how you like you whisper something in somebody's ear, and you say one sentence, mm -hmm. and you wait. It's like kind of like that. Like this is just a video version of that. It's pretty neat. That's exactly what. That's exactly what. It is. Yeah, it's the. It new, comes like, out. Yeah, it comes out totally, totally screwed up at the end. Yeah. Oh that's, my gosh! That's funny. Another thing that's going to come up totally screwed up at the end is this episode with the one and only sitting next to me, virtually. Coming up on Thunder Pop. Is the one and only back in the Thunderpop Dome virtually read feed the read Charles. Feed the read. Good day, cunts. Feed the read. Feed the read. There it is. <laughs> and you got I got some snacks for you there at the corner of the nom, nom, screen nom, there. Nom. You have some popcorn. Nom, nom. Oh boy, we're here for the 147th episode of this show. And I've got, like I said, one and only Feed the Read Charles next to me uh, from a uh, undisclosed location. Bunker. I'm in a bunker. Yeah. He's in a bunker right now because it is 2021. And what else would you do in the year 2021 but then hide out in a bunker? I'm with about 50 feet underground right now. He's got his all his survival food, <laughs> weaponry, weaponry. He's, he's ready for the apocalypse. And women. I got women too. Oh, that's a that's a plot twist. I didn't know you had figured, <laughs> figured that one out. But now they might be here, you know. Is it kind of like that video we just watched? Kind uh, yeah. Similar uh, yeah. concept. Yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. they're okay. trying to make look, it make it as nice as possible for them. You know, just trying to make look, it comfortable. Look, our friend Luis Almeida. Oh my God! Uh, comment with that with that, with that picture. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so he's listening. Hey, Luis, uh, the vehicle did come back as stolen. Oh boy. Um, maybe you shouldn't have touched the vehicle. Uh, you now you're you've ruined the investigation uh, for them catching these scumbags who stole the vehicle. So, uh, oh, job well done, sir. Job well done. Reed's coming on mm -hmm. car that was a stolen car left at his bunker oh. in the front. Break his bunker. You sound like a robot now. Yeah. So that was that was happening. Well, on this episode, to be for wow. real, to be to be honest, and no joking aside, we're gonna get into Invincible, the Prime mm -hmm. series, Prime Video series that's been taking the world by storm. 
But if you ask one Reed Charles, he'll tell you that that's sh- that's in the comics has been around for almost a decade. It's old news, man. It's old, old news. It's old, he'll tell you it's old news, but most people, television, not they're not comic book readers or they did not read the comic book or discovering it this year. Or and they just like, don't they just don't read. That could be possible. You know? Could be possible. They just watch TV. But the show uh is blowing people's minds uh it's been a huge hit i think it's a a huge contender already it's may but i think it's gonna be hard to beat for best show of the year for 2021 Uh, animation i I think the i put it i put it on a level of live action though i put it level with live action show in terms of story uh this the the characters the development of the characters the intensity of the show it's a Mm -hmm. it's what i call for tv a page turner like I could not stop watching it once I got oh, started. Yeah. I wanted, I couldn't, I couldn't wait yeah. to get to the next episode and see what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. So we're going to talk about the first season. We're also going to have predictions for season two. And Reed says, just read the comics. Read the that's, comics all you, that's all you need to do to find the, the find the prediction. I'm Stephen Presley. It's the 147th show. Uh, we're also going to have a uh, thunder take to open the show. Uh, an old friend of ours, George Lucas is back in the news. Well, he's not back in the news, but we're going to try to put him back in the news. Uh, recently, a recent interview that brought back a story about George Lucas that I have never heard about. This is a really, a really funny story. So we're going to talk about that. All that and a bag of chips and the dip right here. And popcorn. And, and popcorn. Nom, nom. Nom, nom, and Reed, nom, and Reed nom, Charles nom. in his bunker. Nom. He got Wi-Fi in his bunker today, so he's back on the show. We got, we got Wi-Fi. We got women. We got guns. We got everything. He's got everything. Drugs. Stolen vehicles. Stolen vehicles. He's, oh. he's, a, he's a cartel member at this point. No, All no, right, no, let's no, get no. Okay, I lied. Yeah, yeah. And here we are for 147th episode. We're gonna talk Invincible today. We're gonna to talk Thunder Take to open the show. Reed Charles, mm-hmm. George Lucas. I'm gonna tell you a funny this a little funny clip I'm gonna show you. So George Lucas, been kind of laying low in recent years. I think he's kind of semi-enjoying his retirement, selling Star Wars and and selling Star Wars and enjoying his one billion dollars, I guess, however much money he has. It was four. Did he have four billion? Oh, well, four billion dollars. He gave three billion, I think, to dogs. So like a dog shelter. (laughs) And then so he's he's only got a billion left. Okay. What an idiot. All right. So he wanted to help the puppies. Don't, 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 you know, criticize him for the man for doing that. Okay. I, I don't know if he really did that. Okay. On the Thunder Take. Uh, so this interview actually made the news, but not for this story. But this is the best story in the interview because I watched some different clips of the Seth Rogen interview on the Howard Stern show. Uh, but what's funny is the story that made the news was him saying that he wouldn't work with his, uh, his buddy, uh, J- uh, Franco anymore. Uh, when he was asked whether he would work with, with uh, James Franco, he said he wasn't going to work with him anymore. And that's because, you know, James Franco got, you know, had some situation with some women controversy. I don't that was know. Years, that was years ago. Wasn't yeah. It? But they're still, you know, they're still talking about it. They asked oh. him if he would still work with him and that made the news, but this is the best story. I don't care about that, that story. I don't care about James Franco anymore. I don't care about, I don't even care about Seth Rogen, but I do care about, I care about this, this story. Cause this story is hilarious. Uh, he actually, he's had, a, he's had a couple, he's had a couple movies I really like. I think he's very funny, but I still don't care about him. But here's the thing. This um, this story is really funny about George Lucas. And he talked about working, you know, in Hollywood, they have meetings, what they call meetings. And they'll they'll take a meeting with someone. He talked about taking a meeting with Tom Cruise. One time Tom Cruise wanted to get into comedy. He set up a meeting with Seth Rogen and a director about maybe doing comedy. They talked about a meeting he had with Steven Spielberg. And Steven, Steven Spielberg brought George Lucas with him just at by it was a surprise. He wasn't expecting George Lucas to show up. Okay, here's the here's a clip. Take a look at this.
you see so much comedy and absurdity in these meetings you take and the people you meet. I mean, you went to the to the pinnacle, Spielberg and George Lucas. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead now and go to the part where he starts getting into talking to George. So what happens is Stephen leaves the room. He gets a call and leaves him alone with George Lucas. Okay, get the, listen to this. It's like, which was mind blowing. Like for mind a ball, film right. fan, it's truly like the most miraculous thing you could ever experience. Yes, and then and um, then Lucas was then wearing. Lucas you said Lucas down. is wearing a, a denim, an all denim outfit. You said all <laughs> like, denim. Like, it's a toe denim. <laughs> Denim shirt, denim jeans. And why was Lucas so weird? It was like, I forget what he said to you. But I think it was, it was either like, late 2011 or early 2012. And I don't know if you remember at the time, people thought maybe the world was going to end in December of 2012. There's, right. a, there's a movie about it that came out. Um, so we sit down. And George Lucas, uh, Steven Spielberg takes a call, so he's kind of busy doing something. <laughs> and me and Evan are uh, are alone sitting with George Lucas, and yeah, he instantly goes into. I feel like the conversation was this abruptly. <laughs> we were thrust into it this fast. How's it going? Not great. 2012 is coming, and the world's gonna end. <laughs> <laughs> Which <laughs> great, great starter, like great opener. Um, Where do you go? Yeah. And again, I think we thought he was joking, and he claims to be joking. Like he he says he was joking, mm -hmm. but nothing. And when I say nothing, I mean nothing about the conversation implies that there was any humor to it in any way, shape, or form. He really seemed to think the world was gonna end in 2012. And to this day. I am confused by this and do not know the reality, but he implied he had a spaceship. That was the implication, was <laughs> that, that was in, in preparation for this event in 2012, there was an implication that he had some sort of contingency plan to leave the planet. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and it's a weird thing when someone tells you that, but then you're looking at, you're looking at him and you're like, if anyone maybe has a spaceship it's a billionaire who's obsessed with space <laughs> like who, who else maybe has their own secrets so there that's the that's the that's the pretty much the the meat of the story so it's kind of weak what the the fact that george lucas was scared that the world was going to end or the actual story itself well the whole thing is like he's got a, he's got a place in new zealand i'm pretty sure well here do you, what do you think it's scary? Do you think it's weak that George Lucas wanted to run away in, in a spaceship? Or do you think it's weak that, let me clarify, do you think it's weak that Seth Rogen no, it's a, was it's telling a, the, was it's telling the story? Weak, it's just a weak story. I don't, I don't care. I don't really care about this story. Oh. Oh, yeah. Feed so let's, the so let's, read. So let's talk about what you've been up to, man. How you Feed been? the read. I thought it was a pretty funny ass story. For you, you maybe. But look, no, no, I, there's no. I want to dive into this a little bit though, because you're you're gonna die. I know you can dissect this a little, with me a little bit. I've already I've already come up with an answer already. Okay. Feed what? the read. Okay. No, wait. But first of all, do you believe that George Lucas really has a spaceship? No. Or he created designed a spaceship. He probably designed a bunker in New Zealand that looks like a spaceship. Yeah. Okay. Now here's my second question. Do you think that he really was freaked out about 2012? being the end of the world or do you think that he uh was just joking with him no i think he was serious but you know he's oh they're gonna look at me like i'm, I'm a fool oh i'm just making this up i'm just okay. joking okay no but here's the other one do you think that i got one more for you do you think that that because they later they speculated howard stern brought this up and i thought about it even before he brought it up while i was watching the rest of the video mm -hmm. do you think that's the reason why he sold star wars because it was mm -hmm. around this time that mm -hmm. he sold Star Wars to Disney was because he thought, well, the world's going to end anyway. I might as well just cash my chips in. And also because he could sell Star Wars and get four, like you said, $4 billion. And he's worth 6.8 right now. And you could turn around and take that money and buy your spaceship if you think the world's going to end. So do you think that's what he was doing? Or, no. or like, or you were saying bunker. Maybe he, he was able to build his bunker. No, there's there's been a lot of, uh, a couple of years ago, there's been... There's a place in Dakota. There's a place in New Zealand, in Australia, that a lot of rich people in the tech industry have bought all this property in New Zealand. And there's also a couple of bunkers in um, North, like South, yeah, North Dakota in the corner somewhere. There's a bunch of like old army depot like hangar, uh, bunkers that people have bought for like $30,000, $40,000. 
Well, there's a thing so in Colorado. As... There's a deal. There's a deal in, in I'm sorry, in, in Nevada. No, not Nevada. Colorado near the airport. Under the airport, there's a whole under under. No, nah, there's no one's been able to prove any of that. But it's probably true that there is some kind of like underground stuff there. That's very suspicious because when it comes to the the paintings that they've gotten rid of, I'm not sure they're still there or not. And then you have uh, the plaque that that uh, plaque they put down there. All those yeah. things it says because that company doesn't exist. But it is, yeah, kind of weird when you have a. I would think if anything, like concrete companies would know where like these bunkers are at because like underground because when you when you when you drill a, a bunker or a tunnel or something you have to um, enforce it with concrete and, and rebar right mm -hmm. and so when they do that there's a lot a lot of concrete that you're using for that so if anyone if anyone knows where there's a large amount of concrete that i would think that uh uh concrete factors would know where this large amount of concrete is going it's know? a good point it's true it's about materials uh yeah. I'm, of course i'm hearing now there's going to be a shortage of materials I mean, it'll, it'll bounce back. It's totally because the, the shortage of materials is is true because it's affecting me. It's affecting the company, and it's also affecting. You're my building. Build. You're building a house right now. You're trying to finish the house up. That's yeah. Some of those things are being held back, and that's the problem. Is that the supply line is starting to pick up again now, and it's also with it's just basically like at least you saw what Tesla did, right? Tesla basically are trying to cut up the middleman. And so the idea that they're cutting at the middleman is that the the nickel and lithium that they're that they're mining in a, the same same locations where they're mining the stuff, they're still getting that stuff. Mm -hmm. But they would send it to, to China and have it refined, and then send it to Japan to make to batteries. But they can do away with all that, and they can do they can cut the middleman out and trafficking across the Pacific to do this. So they basically still have the the lithium nickel mines. They bring it to Texas, pretty much. They refine it somewhere in the states, and they bring it to Texas, and they turn into batteries. So the idea is to cut up the middleman. So there, there's wow. the supply is still there, but you have to, you know, I think what Tesla's doing. I'm a big fan of Tesla, I'm a big fan of SpaceX, and so they're what they're doing is amazing. Yeah. Are you excited about them? So they're coming to our town, to our area, Austin. Yeah, are that's about, their, are yeah, you excited been, about that. Or are you more oh, yeah. worried about the change? No, 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 not, not at all. I'm not going to live here anymore, so just, I'm not worried about it. But yeah, I think for for the Tesla, SpaceX, and Starlink are going to be there at the Tesla plant yeah. because across the, because I drive through all there all the time, mm -hmm. and I've been watching um, uh, Robert. Is it Robert something? I forget. He does the the drones, the quad, the quad team. Mm -hmm. They basically go out there with drones and fly around. I've been keeping up with that for the longest time. Of course, I've been keeping up with uh, NASA, some other NASA uh, YouTube channel. That basically, I've been like watching the construction of SpaceX down in Boca Chica, down in the valley. So yeah, I've been I've been I'm a big fan of that, keeping up with it, and uh, you know it's it's amazing at what SpaceX is doing. Ch check this out. So you have you know those rockets like the the Falcon Nine Stage One rocket that lands. That, yeah, it looks like Buck Rogers. Okay, so they've landed that thing eighty three times, right? Stage One rocket, the the Falcon Nine. The reason why they call it Falcon Nine is because it has nine rocket nine Falcons in it. So they've landed it eighty three times. And I, all I got to do is refurbish it, right? Can you imagine how much it costs to make one of those? Twenty million, thirty million dollars. Yeah. So times to say least amount twenty million plus times eighty three. That's how much money he saved. And so the reason why NASA wow. can't do that, NASA wasn't going for something small and working the big. They started with the Saturn V. Boom. Yeah. They can't. They can't. And so and another thing too that the, if it wasn't for NASA, te, uh, SpaceX wouldn't exist. But SpaceX is True. kind of returning the favor by taking astronauts up to the ISS. That's the, we don't need the Soyuz anymore. We don't need the Russians anymore. Yeah. So yeah. it's a, it's a, it's amazing. He's a, a very important person, um, Elon, and um, yeah, I, I pray he stays as long alive as long as possible. You know, because it's amazing what he's doing. So it's, it's cr incredibly, incre it's incredible what he's doing. Yeah. Um, speaking of people on the spectrum. Uh, Ghostland two four six said, "Sometime mm. I wonder if uh, Lucas is a tiny bit on the spectrum, especially with the monotone way he inter interacts with the people. With people, I never thought about that. Um, of course, um, the uh, Elon Musk, uh, you know, came out as being on the spectrum himself uh, on when he was on Saturday Night Live a few weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. So that's he, what does, I was like, he does he does have a handicap. On, um, His handicap." 
if he's autism, but it's his handicap is he's a he's a fucking genius. You know? Oh that's yeah, a, absolutely. It's a handicap. There's no doubt about that. Absolutely. He's, did you see? Is. Did you see his tweet to uh, to Bezos? No, no. His tweet. His tweet was uh, can't get it up into orbit. Uh, oh. And he had an attachment. Yeah, I was oh, like, fuck yeah, I love that man. Oh love, man, that's a, that's a that's a good one. That's a good one. He got him there. Yeah. Uh, it's he's a, it's he's a, good, a he's an incredible person. Yeah. It's a good damn tweet. Um, <laughs> okay, now we talk about a good damn show. Invincible, Reed Charles, mm-hmm. and you you had tweet you had uh, posted on social media that you are as everybody that knows you well, you're not impressed easily. Not really. No. Uh, when it comes to consumption of media, consumption TV, of fiction, movie yeah movies TV, you have a few things you really like a lot. But it, it takes a lot to impress nonfiction. You. Yeah, nonfiction, real things. You liked uh well, you like for when it comes to fiction, you like the early days of Walking Dead. No, I'm, I'm over that. I'm all okay, over okay. That. But I know you the were, history of it though. I can you tell like, you how what attracted me to this first thing. You liked Expanse. Oh yeah, that's good. That's you a like good Expanse. One. You used to like Battlestar Galactica, the sci fi. No, I, I like that, but uh, the first yeah. seasons were really good. Yeah. You like that the, the sci fi, uh early days of sci fi uh network when they had uh when they had Battlestar Galactica. Okay, so this show you said was one, and this is the first thing I've heard you get real excited about lately. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you you like you didn't watch the boys, but you well, you read a little bit of the comic books. Well, I'm not I'm not impressed. I don't I don't care about superheroes and all that crap. It's yeah, like, you've got mm, used to be whatever. you were you were a fan, you had your time, you were a big fan of the fiction genre. But you don't you you now I know you've switched and you're more into history and and genealogy and and um, being in the presence of God and Mother Earth yeah that kind of thing all that stuff yeah you do a little you do uh, and you're hanging out in your bunker <laughs> you're hanging out in your bunker okay yeah so and we're gonna ask you later because you told me a story about your suit your own superpowers so in the feed the read segment as a teaser for everyone Reed Charles sure. is gonna tell us about his own superpowers when he had superpowers himself you sure you want to talk about that there's a little a little teaser there get ready for that it's coming up okay i don't know if you want to talk about that no i I definitely want to talk about it but okay get into invincible this series how now how much of the comic book or how much were you aware of invincible before you watched the show when I when I was collecting, you know, Star Wars and Walking Dead and all that stuff, I, yeah. I did notice that uh, Kirkland. I was like, wonder what other comics that Kirkland makes or he writes. And I was like, oh, Invincible. I was like, man, a little boring. Another. Oh, that's that's one forty four. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Um, by, the way, last, by the way, this the is the one. this is the final issue. Yeah. We're going to talk about that here in a little bit. Sad. And spoiler spoilers, by the way, if you have not watched Invincible on Prime Video and you care about, oh, it, we're going to spoil it for you. Tough shit. We're we're going to spoil the hell out of it, so you might turn around and and. Go back to bed. Go back to bed. Okay. Or go to your bunkers or wherever you're at in 2021. Here's, here's a texting me. Stop texting me. So tell me, um, yeah, you knew the show a little bit or you knew the story a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I knew the comic and I just like, didn't care for any superhero crap because it's too much, but it wasn't until like what, uh, because they started this thing back in 2003, 2002. I think 2003 was the first thing that came out with a comic. And then it wasn't, uh, I think, 2002 was on uh, Savage Dragon. Savage Dragon's part of the same universe as them, as because uh, because uh, Savage Dragon, you, Savage Dragon, you'll see him at the funeral um, for the Guardians of the Globe in the comic. You'll see that. Yeah. Uh, so, but the first thing that uh, I knew about it and everything didn't didn't really care for it. But then when I saw Omni Man, if you see Omni Man, like what a handsome bastard! You know, he's got a must. But well, the whole thing was like, who's this guy who looks like Superman? But he's got a mustache and gray hair. I'm like, yeah. that's that's sexy. I like that. So what the hell is this? And then I, I just got hooked. I go, who's this sexy man? And uh, yeah, and I was like, Omni Man. What kind of shit is this? And then there, then after realizing who, what he, you know, what he is was what his real purpose was. It's like, bull. What is this about? And I got real excited. So yeah, and then I went back and I started reading a little bit. And I was like, God damn, these these cartoons are awesome. So that's what that's what hooked me. This like a couple of months ago when I told you guys, yeah, yeah, but it, it already finished. The t- the time, what was it? I think it was during the first season, like the fifth or sixth episode. That's when I that's when I found that's when I discovered it, rediscovered it, basically, and I was like, holy crap, what's this? So yeah, that's that's when I got uh, back to it. This is Robert Kirkman, of course. Yeah, mm-hmm. who also wrote the comic Walking Dead. 
Mm-hmm. He uh, was he's he's part of Image Comics. He's had some other comics with him as well. He came over from Marvel. Yep, he wrote he from had Marvel. A, yeah, he had he had a situation with Marvel. Uh, they had a I don't know if it was a, a total fallout, but maybe yeah, I don't, a, I don't know the details of that either. Yeah. It seemed like there were some creative differences that he had with him on some projects that he wanted to do going forward. So he went to Image Comics, which was a startup comic book um, mm-hmm. company, and he became a, a partner. Yeah, and he's the only one of the partners that actually is also a creator, like mm-hmm. you know, actually hands hands on creator as well uh, in in actual content for the uh, the comic book company. So for Image, they basically built their brand on the back of his, you know, his uh, his Walking idea. Dead. Walking Dead was yeah. uh, was their money maker, and then yeah. plus we did um, Invincible. It probably wasn't as 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 popular, but it still right. had a really good story. And but I now, yeah. But now that's going to change, I think. And this show yeah. is going to be pretty popular because it's just getting started. Because on yeah. streaming, people are going to discover the show for a year. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah, exactly. Two years. But you're only talking. From from what I understand, that first season only covers about like episode. I mean, uh, comic book episode oh, ten. Yeah. It just so it just barely it's, scratching so, the it's just barely scratching, right? <laughs> and, and, but it the thing is too the the timeline for the comics is a little bit different from the show because yeah, uh, robot um, him putting himself into a kid's body that didn't happen. That doesn't yeah. happen until later. Yeah, but it happened during. It doesn't really matter because look, they're using the same strategy they did with Walking Dead and the Walking yeah. Dead comic book. Like, oh, this is going to happen. And, of course, it was a little different in the show because you don't want to give him the exact same thing. The same strategy, the same thing I heard him say also was for Walking Dead, he didn't want people to be able to predict what was going to happen. But also he could go back yeah. and change things to where, oh, I wish I had done this this with the story. I wish I had done this with the story. So the same thing with, with Invincible, they're doing the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, and then there he, they look, he's right there, uh, you know, playing uh, Glenn, and he's the main voice. That's There's a, one, cool. one of the actors there that's mm-hmm. in the voicing, and of course, an all star cast of actors. Oh, he's yeah, god damn, oh, right there. That sexy got, bastard, they got the voice perfect, didn't they? By casting him for he Omni-Man. sounds like a father, yeah, sounds. yeah. And he also had he also can get the uh, the 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 dark side as well when it gets dark, mm-hmm. he's perfect for that too. Good, yeah, good actor, good voice yeah, actor. Yeah, great actor. He's he's done a great job. Yeah, he's one of the great. He's one of the great. He's a great actor, great voice actor. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mark Hamill in there as the yeah. Person. I didn't know that. I was like, yes, what? he's in there. There's a lot of a lot of names. I guess you can already already predict which character I hated the most, but I'm not going to talk about that. Did you but, know uh, uh, this guy, the college kid who was no, actually, I didn't. That I didn't is, know is this guy. This character that voices the Ren and Stimpy. No, is, is a cameo. Rick and no, Rick, Rick and Morty. Rick, I'm sorry, not Rick and Stimpy. Rick, yeah, Rick, <laughs> Rick, Rick, Rick and Morty. You idiot! Oh boy, God, me idiot! <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. So anyway, yeah, he, he's he's he makes a cameo in there as the college kid that voices that. Um, did you enjoy that character? That was a pretty funny character, wasn't it? For the few minutes he's in there until it, things go dark for him. The college kid. They're just the, the college yeah, punk it was, idiot. It was just just a story. It wasn't. Yeah. But that, but the I really, I mean, he just all these characters are so okay. It's a fiction story, obviously, mm-hmm. but there's a lot of really believable stuff with the character. The characters themselves have com- have elements that are very believable. Yeah, no, that and that's why the true. show works right. so well. It's, I mean, it's yeah. not even about the. I mean, yeah, he built a world, a superhero world of his own. That's it. Starts off looking like it's a parody of a DC cartoon. But it's all it's all based on the on what the A. B and C story is right. Like when you look at Rick and Morty, the A story is Rick, the B story is Morty. When you look at uh, polar opposites, the A story is the two adults, the B story is the kids, and the yeah. C story is the wall. No, well, the C story and, and polar opposites, the wall is the best part of that show. Yeah. So for this, I would say the A story is the 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 vulture mites. You know that those guys, what they're the and part of that A story is the father. Now, the B is the boy, you know. Well, I guess you could probably do it the other way around if you wanted to, but there is this A and B story, like the father and the son. Oh, the moment. Oh, it's two reads. Two reads. Oh, you don't want that. You no. don't want that. It's gonna be Reed interviewing Reed for the rest of this this live stream. That's a dangerous combination, there, sir. Dangerous. Uh, combination. Cloning. We're getting into the cloning topic. Okay, so actually, and this show covers all these hot topics. 
of science fiction, cloning, cyborgs. It's got a little bit of everything in there. Not, yeah, cloning. Yeah, there's cloning. Yeah, it gets in. It gets into the cloning a little bit. Um, so it gets into all this stuff. Uh, our, it's uh, big, the, it's DC. It's DC. Aliens. Aliens. Yeah, but it's, D, aliens. it's DC redone, like sarcastically. That's what he's doing. Yeah. And so it's 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 definitely not Marvel. It's definitely DC. It's a copy of DC. Oh yeah, yeah. Because it's got yeah. Omni Man, Superman. Yeah. Omni Man is their version of Superman. But Super also the Invincible. Well, not Invincible, but the who's the 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 Abraham Lincoln guy? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's yeah. like a Superman too. But as long as if you you can take him apart, but if you put it back together, he yeah. he re oops he reanimates. Yeah. Yeah, they do. They did some different things with the characters and and how they they. I mean, there's a. The first group of their version of the Super Friends. You yes, have, I was you totally have, uh, the Justice League. Yeah, you have the yeah, you have the Flash in there. You have their own version <laughs> of Wonder Woman. Yeah. You have their own version. So they had their all their versions of the different characters, and then Omni Man is basically like this world's version of Superman, but yeah. it's a little bit different. This Superman's a little bit different. There's a little a, more realistic. Yeah, yeah. There's darker. There's some darker shit going on here with this character. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say darker. Well, well. I mean, it gets a little bit dark. Come on. I mean, when he calls his wife at the end, he said, oh, she's just like a pet. I loved her. Like okay, see, pet. that's the thing. That's the thing. Okay. You, and you've, heard, and, you've heard. You've and heard. The, and he's you, fighting his son in a bloody battle. That's pretty yeah, dark. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, man. But the thing is, look, when you when you think of like. Um, the older you live, the more wise you become, right? And yeah. when you when you think about what they're what that guy was talking about, who was it you're talking about? That, about that? Oh yeah, that senator from Hawaii, right? Yeah. How they're all acting like like children, right? Yeah. And so I had a friend of mine call me. I'm not gonna say the name of that person, but um, I'm okay, hearing. Let's back, let's back up because the audience might don't know the story we're well, talking about. Before I'm talking, we... I'm, what I'm talking, trying the point I'm trying to make here is basically is that the mentality of human nature is childish. The if we could live longer like thousands of years, we, we, we're still in the elementary stage. Look what's happening in Israel, right? They're, they're, yeah. they're fighting over resources, fighting over bullshit, and they're holding grudges that are, that are that's thousands of hundreds of years old. And yeah. they're fighting on bullshit that they get the hell over it. But they have this vendetta, they have this revenge they want, they want, they want to do. Yeah. That's, a, that's, a, that's a, the level of elementary. So the hu humanity is still at an elementary level. There's, there's gonna, it's going to take a long oh, yeah. time before we get to the college level. You know. Where if we even get to that, will we even make it there? Because um, I mean, the, the world, they, you know, yes, yeah, scientists that say, yeah, the world eventually will, you know, end. Humanity will, humans will end. No, hopefully not. That, that's the whole thing is that, that what the vulture mites represent is, and when, what the father is trying to do is adult level shit. They're trying to call the herd. Trying to make well, things better. Yeah, no, I see what you're saying. You're, you it's what I'm saying? you're, you're we're trying to go from his perspective on where his yeah. his in his world. The vulture mind perspective. Yeah, there, there, he lived for hundreds, no thousands. Thousands. Because I, th of I years. think I was yeah. trying to figure that out. Because his character and his people lived for thousands of years. Yeah, where humans, they, the lifespan of humans is a hundred years at most. Yeah, hundred years, Matt. Usually. But for them, I think for every for every. For every year for them, until it, for especially, well, the Mark can't really, he developed normally like a human till he was puberty and then he got his power. So it'll start slowing yeah. down in time. But the vulture mites, I think they age, I have an estimate probably of like every year is 100 years to them. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe 20, maybe 50 years. Because if you look at, because he's been, he said in one of the comments when I was reading it, he said for thousands, for a thousand, thousand years, and it sounded like he was saying maybe 2,000, 3,000 years. He'd been living on Voltron, on Voltron. And so when he was living there for a couple of thousand years, probably like 30, he looks like a 30 year old. So I would say like every, every year is a hundred years. Every hundred, every 10 years is a thousand years. So I think they lift to, they, they, of course, the older they get, the slower they, they slow down. So when he's on earth, he looks like in his forties, he's probably about 4,000 years old. And then they get stronger too. Right. And the only weakness they have is uh, the equilibrium in their ear. And that's the only weakness they have. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you're cool. saying you really hope that there really is an Omni Man, and there is a, a, a ah, they're they're going to wipe half this planet out. If there did happen. Tell you that. What what are they called the vert the what are their their race called the the their Voltron? Men? I think it's Voltron, and they're called they're for, they're Voltramites is what they're they're called. You like that character, don't you? I mean, for oh, what, the father, the father was my yeah. Was like, you love the this? father, yeah. No, he he's he's changing, but when you 
because I also read the course of last one, the 144. I read that one too. And it's, in, it's really nice to see where it went. Like, like, because I remember okay. that one, that one thing that was really cool was when I saw the episode and I read the comic too, it says, what will you have in 500 years? He tells his son that, right? And he goes, I'll have you dad. And that was, that was like, Oh, that was pretty, that was pretty like, damn, that was oh, really that was, emotional. Oh, yeah. that gets you in the feels. That got me in the feels too. Oh yeah. And then later on in, in 144, that last episode is so emotional. It was no, it and is, the, and their their whole dialogue with each other back and forth. That's what I'm saying. Oh, this man. is this is better than anything animated. No, this is because it's, it's it's a good story. The animation is not that great, but the story is good. The story, but, it, but, and, but and the characters. Heard, no, but let me let me finish the story. Yeah. So later on in 144, he basically says, "My father once told me, what will I have in 500 years?'" And he looks around and he goes, "I have you." And he tells his significant other that, and she lives for a long time too. But the thing is, like, like after 500 years, he became the emperor, and he basically turned Voltramite around. He, because when you talk about, there's a lot yeah. of things, other things too. There were spoilers, which I don't care. But there's also the Voltramite purge, and there's the Voltramite scourge uh, virus. Oh yeah, too, there's a lot. On. There's a yeah. lot to cover. This, this, this stories that he wrote for these, the series of comics spans thousands of years. Yeah, that went on for uh, the comics series went on for several years. It started yeah. in the early 2000s. It just ended a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're gonna, they're not gonna be. Able, I mean, they're even, they're gonna have to really skip around a lot of stuff. Well, they I heard, skipped. Yeah, they skipped. And the well, last, they already are. Yeah, they, they already are. In the comics, they skipped like you know a couple hundred years, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Kirkman uh, has said that he hopes that we can get you know do seven, eight, nine seasons. Oh, in, in the comic book, yeah, two and three have already been confirmed. The, Second for the season. Anime. Yeah, they've yeah. already got they already got two and three right confirmed. confirmed yeah. Yeah, and I'm sure Prime is going to. You know, this show is going to do well and it's going to continue to do well, I think. And it'll probably get mm -hmm. a, a good, long, healthy run. Um, oh, yeah, definitely. And get to finish. But it'll it'll be, you know, it could go on seven, eight, nine seasons. I think that's what I predict. Well, when you, talk have, about, when you talk about also skip about around the, a lot, uh, they're going to skip around a lot. When you talk about the, the fight between him and his father. Yeah. Like that. That's a that's a pretty big. I think also that's really emotional a little bit for me and a lot of other men, too, probably because. Yeah. The the arguing, the fighting and arguing with your father. You know, like those who don't have a father and have a fight with a father is like, damn, you know, that's, that's a, a, a fa you know, children need their father in their lives, you know? Yeah. Um, but there's a certain point, like, yeah, it's just, yeah. Children need a father in their life. That's why these characters are so real. I mean, there has been mm -hmm. family battles like that in real life mm -hmm. where things got a little bit, you know, between a parent and a child where, you know, Things got rough, yeah. And as the child was growing up, and and you know that happens in this movie, the 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 revelation of a secret the dad was carrying with him, uh, his mission, his mission. Yeah, that's in a lot of real life stories. Well, see, he, but it was it was his idea for that mission, that type of mission. Yeah, he because he, they, because he <clears him. throat> what happened what happened was that they were, they were expanding so far in the galaxy that they're running thin. And this is this is way this is basically when they first started off it was called uh, eliminate the weak from our planet. That's robot. I think that's yeah. robot. Yeah. yeah. Or that's no, no, is that the kid? No, that that's the, that's the best. The, uh, the kid that has the bomb. The, the cyborg. He turned into a cyborg. Ooh. The college kid that was. Uh, that's a, a, yeah. That's one of the his, kids. His the, best friend's uh, boyfriend. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, Grayson's boyfriend. Yeah, he. Um, or Grayson's uh, best friend. Oh yeah, so. So the first was basically when they first expanded to the galaxy, it was basically uh, eliminate the weak from our planet. That's what he was saying. Eliminate the weak. And then they basically um, conquered the galaxy, but they ran too thin. And they started actually conscripting people they conquered to fight the wars for them. And then it got to a point to where, you know, Argyle, the emperor, got killed. And then, you know, that was his, I forget his name, uh, Thaddeus. Thaddeus basically rebelled. He was the first to rebel against them. And that's what started the whole coalition of planets and stuff. Yeah. So as far as like the history of, of this, I'm pretty familiar with the history. Yeah. What what do you think they'll they'll decide to cover next season? How much of Omni Man do we see next season? Is he going to be out of it for the first few for the first part of next season? And then he's gonna be kind of a mystery where he's at. What happens? I think to him? I think he'll be gone. He won't come back to the third season. That's what my prediction is. Because so he'll be gone a while. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. That they'll have pretty... a full they'll have a full season next year where it'll be invincible kind of taking over the the throne as being the the uh the hero of earth 
mm-hmm. and, and you know instead of instead of his dad Omni Man, he'll be dealing with all these villains they showed at the end. They had yeah. that kind of montage yeah. of all these villains that are sort of left behind and then need to be dealt with. I also think we're going to get another alien attempt at the alien invasion. I don't think the alien that, you know, the alien invasion, they tried twice. Yeah. They're, yeah, they're going to come back. Yeah. They're going to come back, but this time there's going to be no Omni man there to kick their ass. And yeah, that was, what? that was pretty cool. He that was actually that. one of my favorite episodes. Jesus. That was the one I wanted to go back and watch holding again. His, holding his head. It's all, that's all that's left. God, oh, I was so like, I was I know you loved it. So he goes back, so he goes into the portal. He gets pulled into the portal. Did you, no, no, no. He goes, he didn't get pulled in. He goes in. No, he went in himself on his he own. He went in himself and then he's holding. Did you see him? If you look, he's holding the thing, he's looking at them, he's like, open the portal. And as soon as they opened oh, it, he, he, he took off into the portal and let that thing fall on top of him. He, he went basically, in. Basically, yeah, he he went in on purpose. Like, let me remind you that this planet is not yours to conquer, it's mine. Because That's again, what like that I was said, about. That's what they yeah, was because, like I, told, I said before, the when they when they were thinned out in the galaxy, he came up. With, you got to remember that he's the son of the emperor. Yeah, they lost. They they forgot that information, and so uh, what's his name? Thrag, who took over his mission. He was a regent. That's what you call it, a regent, a parent regent, whatever like that. It's basically a person in charge until they find the proper heir, right? Yeah, and they're all about the royal line, and so when when he took over. What was it? Yeah, his idea was to, they're running too thin. They go, hey, how, how about we a different strategy? Why don't we just infiltrate these planets that we want to conquer? Let's take a, let's take a breather. Let's just take a breather of what we conquered so far and just grow a little bit our population. And then uh, why don't we infiltrate the ones we want to take over and then we'll weaken them and we'll take them over. That was his idea. So he was the first one to go do that. And Earth was that, was that first, I guess, case, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So it'll be a little different this time. When the aliens try to invade again, this time yeah. it's going to be up to Invincible and his friends to, to take care of it, deal with yeah. it. Yeah, Robot um, goes over there, I think, too. And that's one of the things that could happen? Is Robot going over there? Well, yeah, when the comics it happens. But they, but for them, I guess their timeline, um, basically, they they trap that their dimension is faster. Yeah. So they, they're... I remember right. they kept, they, they kept, they kept coming aging. back. Right. They were eight, but they were a lot smarter. They would come back if they were wiser, when, but they were also older. Yeah, for them it was like 10 years, and for us it was only a year. Well, they were also technologically so much <coughs> more advanced because they would come back with all these years under their belt. Right. Of, and they would use that. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's gonna happen next season when they come back again. Yeah. And I bet they come back probably pretty early within the first four or five well, episodes. Because they're they're basically devastated by him. You see, he was zip zapping all through their planet, fucking their planet up. And yeah. like, damn. Yeah, there'll be was... some. Oh, I think there'll be some overlap. Like I think there'll be invincible. Like having to, he's he's battling it out with one of the villains that we saw toward mm-hmm. the end of the season, mm-hmm. and the aliens are going to show up right in the middle of a battle <laughs> with a different bad guy, and the aliens. Yeah. So the bad guy is going to have to turn his attention over to the aliens to fight them with with invincible. I think that's I think it's one of the things that's going to happen. Well, another thing too is really interesting is like of course you know the Earth is the center of attention because right? we're from Earth, right? Right. And and uh, of course. The Voltramites, because they got to they got not, to a point. Not my son though. My son is obsessed with Saturn and Mars. He has so many questions about Saturn and Mars. He wants to know why we can't go. You know why why we can't go to Saturn. There's a good question. It's like why can't we go? Yeah, we're, why? We, dude, think why about this. In, in two years, we're going to be back on the moon. Within our lifetime, we're going to see people on that, Mars. That's on cool. Mars. That's cool. That's and that's because of space ice, you know, and NASA too. That's that's incredible. Yeah, it's that's some pretty pretty cool stuff, man. That is cool stuff. That is fun. We're gonna go to space camp too. He wants to go dude, to space camp. You, dude, you gotta send him. You gotta do it. You gotta send he him. He wants to do a space camp. Dude, well, we gotta do it. We gotta put I'm talking about my son, Mike, at uh, three, three and a good, half. Good. Turns four, turns four this summer. He uh, is obsessed. We got a projector and we do this. It's a projector you can put it on the ceiling. Oh man. And you look at all the stars and planets with it, and uh, he'll keep be like, up with that. Whatever, whatever interest he has in that. Dude, give him all the tools he needs for that. Don't let don't let oh, yeah. him veer off from that. Yeah, that's okay. good. That's really okay, good. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll keep we'll keep talking about. It. Yeah, he he loves it. For me, I love it too because I'm relearning all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. haven't had read and understood in years or like read about. He also loves, of course, dinosaurs. He's really into that. I think a little bit more into space than into dinosaurs, but but he's he's an interest in the dinosaurs too. That's good. He always has questions about them and stuff. He's like, why you know? Uh, of course, we may see dinosaurs in our life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the same source as SpaceX. Mm-hmm. They had talked about uh, being able to say, "Yeah, we could we could redo recreate a dinosaur." 
Um, oh man, and only if it's for for well, we already have meat. Why do you want? I don't know. I don't think that's a good idea. No, I saw well, that movie. I saw that movie. It didn't work yeah, out too well. <laughs> I've seen those movies. I've seen those movies, and uh, they don't turn out well. This is well, good. there's a reason why they're extinct. Uh, they, yeah, they co they lived in a different when the Earth was in a different. It was a different time, a different environment. Six, yeah, sixty million years ago. And uh, but hey, let's just bring it all back. Let's get the UFOs. Let's get the aliens. Let's get the dinosaurs going at the same time. <laughs> well, let's 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 get the dinosaurs going. Let's get the alien uh, UFO invasion that we've all been you know we've had a boner over for for years, wanting that, and people are are begging for it. Let's just see how that goes. Bring the dinosaur clones in. Um, let's do the AI uploads to all the robots. Let's, let's have a read uh his ai uploaded to a robot and be a, there'll be a robot read that he can clone himself his body like that like the robot in the uh what do you yeah. think about that that was an interesting character wasn't it the robot yeah dude that was so i, I that like the, that was pretty good too that, that that really like holy crap this is really good especially the part about when we make the guy the two scientists the twins like they make we make it to remember we put his hand up and yeah. he couldn't tell if it was his hand or the other hand. And I was like, yes. we did that on purpose because we didn't want you to. I didn't see, see the transfer of seeing this better. I was like, God damn, that was good. That was just, that was, that was, a, that, was that really got me. He's like, holy crap, that's fucking good. The two twins, the blue guys, yeah. they, go, they get well back, they go back to jail. The two clones, <laughs> the clones, like you're, you're the original. They yeah, no, you're the copy. Yeah. You're the copy. That was so good. That was yeah. like a that was like it's, their old comedy act. Like they're they yeah. they say they sound and look stupid, but they're actually pretty smart. They're real intelligent. Yeah, they're they're really that. intelligent, but they they make them sound stupid. They make them look kind of stupid. But that's they're actually a, that's not, such a good scene. The whole god damn, it's some like, that's some that's that's good writing, man. That's just really good writing. It's good writing. I think they'll, they'll be back. Stuff. They'll be back out yeah, at, at really some point. And then, um, oh yeah. man, his name, the name of the, this the. Oh, uh, Cecil. Cecil. Oh God, yes, man. That guy. That guy's a great character too. Now, there's been speculation Shit. on the interwebs that Cecil turns bad next season. Some some would already say he's kind of already in the gray area, as he even joked about. No, 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 no. no you don't no. agree with that? You don't think? He no, he's a, he's a he's a he is the the only I guess human equivalent of a guardian of the planet. He's. His objective is guard the planet, no, and by all means necessary. Like, like oh, section. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, section thirty-one. Yes, yeah, so by all means necessary. Yeah. When he brought in that guy, that was the uh, the one that was in the college campus kidnapping the kids, and yes, you see, of, he instead of throwing him away in jail, like no, 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 we could use that. Let's yes, Let's he saw. The, he sees the potential. He sees the potential to to because his thing was that they could never get Obdi Man under control, and you realize no, they there is handle. no controlling him. There is no controlling out no. So, except for his son, his son's the only one that has a possibility. Right. And they tried, to... and we saw what happened. It he's still not. It's still he not as still strong couldn't. as his dad. No, he's not as strong as his dad yet. Man, when he held that, him up that... against the train, when he Jesus, when he held him, remember the train part? Oh yeah, that was. Oh intense. my yeah. god, uh, that was not like... a comic. That was not. That was done oh, okay. better. That, that was that done was, better. That was done better in the in the in the in the, in the, in the cartoon. God damn, yeah. that was like oh my god. He's trying. Him. He's trying to stop him. Like no, no, he's yeah. going right through them. It's like oh god. Well, and Kirkman, who's working on this show as well, mm -hmm. they, they recognize sometimes there's some things that they can do. And yes, that's that's what I'm talking about. They can recycle stuff. They can do things a little different. Like, oh, we should do it this way instead. That they that's could do that they couldn't do with a comic. This is twice he's been able to do that. One with Walking Dead, and now with this one, he's been yeah. able. To, he's had two chances. That's really he good. Cherry picks what? You know, do you know he had this idea in his back pocket when he was at Marvel? And this potentially could have been a Marvel comic. Oh man, I'm glad he saved it for his own. That's good. But he he saves it and then takes it with him to Image Comics. You know, so it's like George Lucas. You know, he kind of redoes his own versions when he wants to. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, he wanted to do Flash Gordon. No, no, George, no. I'm talking George. about Star Wars. The, the remaking of Star Wars. Every time a new VDV comes out, it's different. Right now, now Han Solo didn't shoot first. Oh, now Greedo shot right. first. Like what the fuck? He's remaking fuck his own. This? He's remaking his own. He's spin. redoing everything, just like yeah. He redid his own shit for a while. He made a lot of money over redoing his own yeah, shit because he re-released those movies and those movies got turnouts that weekend like oh, they were we need, for, like they were brand new movies. We need more Jawas here. We need, we need more Ewoks. Oh, God, I mean, it worked. He barely made a new movie. He just changed the old movies and he made a ton of money just on the re redone. And then he got everybody pissed off. 
<laughs> but it kept everybody talking about him for you know kept him relevant. There was there was a uh, have you seen those? There was a guy I watched. I forget where it's at. Basically, these guys talking about how fans have redone films, right? Yeah. And you know, like there's a version of uh, of the Rise of Skywalker redone to where they made the Knights of Ren actually have lines. Yeah. And it's, and then remember, I sent you a link to that. That's right. I sent you a link to the actual movie. Mm-hmm. And of course, behind Ray, there's the, there's the Jedi ghost behind her. Yeah. And That's right. so, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. So the the idea that that fans re-editing films, what they wanted to see is like, that's not going away. That's staying. And when you have Jar Jar oh, yeah. originally that was done, they took Jar Jar out of the movie, edited him out. Yeah. So I'm saying, so this, that particular genre is kind of new and it's like, you, it's not going away. It's, uh, it's able, you're able to do that. What, why is it that, you know, when do they do these uh, de-aging technology like they did? I'm going to ask you this question and agree to, agree to disagree later about Mark Hamill being de-aged for Mandalorian. But they use the de-aging, uh-huh. whenever they use this de-aging technology like they did on Tarkin for Rogue One, they did with Luke Skywalker for, for Mandalorian. Then somebody comes around like a week or two later on yeah. Reddit, Reddit mm-hmm. with a deep fake and, does, and does a better job. Why I is this a major studio like Disney is constantly getting beat by some know. some uh, uh, keyboard warrior. I know. On I don't Red, get that. On Reddit. Well, that's not the case. Remember, what the, 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 I was telling you about these uh, re-editing movies, right? I have to. I have to send you a link later. But there's there was this one movie that this director kept trying to redo his version. He could never get it right. Mm-hmm. And a fan grabbed that movie and re-edited it and put it up for everyone to see. The director saw it. And he goes, "That's it." That's it. And he like, he went to that guy and goes, you, this, this thing you did is now the official director's cut. That's it. That was it. That's what I wanted. Yeah. I could never get that version. And so sometimes you got to leave it to the fans, you know, to let them take the executives out, take these, yeah, these yeah. woke people out and, and get the hell out of the way and let them do the story. Right. Well, if you yeah. think about it, if you're a creator, when you don't have uh, to worry about the pressures of mm-hmm. like, you know, meeting a deadline and also meeting of like getting notes yeah. from executives. Well, no, okay, let me give you an example. Let me get on, on Inven- Invincible, the girlfriend. Yeah. You saw her, right? Yeah. In the comic book, she's a white girl. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? That's the kind of shit that they change, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, there's, there's not enough, you know, uh, call- Caucasian reads freezing up on us a little bit problem, but that's a little too much. That's, that's when, that's when like, what are you doing? But again, Oh, I wish I could have done this instead. That's probably maybe it was his idea. So let's make it chase. Let's change it. You know, let's change it up a little bit to where I wish I'd gone this route instead of this route. And that mm-hmm. could be it too. But again, we have to like, accept it as is because it's a, this a little bit of a, it's a parallel universe of, Invincible comic, basically, is what this is. Yeah, which so I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah. So you didn't like that with him? Well, you you you're no, okay I didn't like with the character. It. I'm okay with the change, but the character. Oh, I just couldn't stand it. You like the character. girlfriend? No, I don't. No, what was it about that? Did you like her in the comics? I didn't read a whole lot to, but in the, in the, mm-hmm. sh- in the God, she was fucking what, annoying. What Jesus. what what about her? What was that? So that was a character you didn't. like? Everything. Mm. It just I don't I don't want to go. I'm trying to be. In, in, I'm trying to. Being Did you nice. like uh what's her name Adam, Adam Eve? Oh yeah, she's cool. I like her. Like Adam yeah. Eve. Does he hook up with? Does he end up with Adam Eve later? Yeah, that happens, doesn't it? That seemed like that that, that was kind of being. She's a, a phoenix. Hinted towards. Yeah, she's a phoenix. Yeah. What do they you mean? Die. That, that's what her. They die in a flame and they come back. Uh, so that, that's probably going to happen too. She's mm-hmm. going to die in a flame and come back, isn't she? Come back. So there's another, and I'll, here's another spoiler. Cause I read, I've, I haven't read the, all the comics. I started reading a little bit here and there, just kind of cherry picking things. Uh, mm-hmm. he, there's yeah, another, too. another girlfriend that emerges later on mm-hmm. late, late in the comics, I believe. If I'm reading correctly, do you know mm-hmm. about that? You know about that? That's, that's her. No, I think there was another, yet another love interest. Uh, maybe I got the wrong one. I'm later not sure on. it was. No, it was her. Okay. Well, it's, it, it goes pretty far down the line, like later on. I have to look but, at that. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. So I could be wrong too. Yeah. Read Charles' superpowers in our Feed the Read segment. I'm going to ask. Oh, by the way, uh, Ghost Hand over on Twitch 
said NASA budget is also very slim compared to the pockets of Elon. Speaking on your, we were talking about uh, SpaceX earlier. That I don't know, but I know, like, let me give an example. So remember that tweet, you know, like, can't get it up into yeah. orbit like that. Okay, so so uh, SpaceX is going to do what they're going to do anyway. They don't care. Mm -hmm. So basically, they want a contract for two point something billion dollars, right? Yeah. If you do the the comparisons to like the Saturn Saturn rockets that are put up, like say Saturn, it was like Saturn eight. I forget Saturn seven is where they died. Saturn nine, eight and nine went to the moon, orbited, came back. Saturn ten orbited, came back, and then Saturn eleven, uh, you know, was Saturn five, the Apollo eleven finally landed, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's how it went. So each one of those those missions, the equivalent of today's money was about two billion dollars, like one and a half billion dollars, right? Mm -hmm. So basically, they're only paying for a mission to the moon what they're doing and so the yes the the it's amazing how nasa oh two again it's amazing it's amazing how nasa can get more done pay cheaper and give it to uh, uh spacex and they can be more efficient at it and that's incredible um the the the, pro the difference between nasa and spacex is that nasa is is they cannot go feast or famine it has to be a constant um generation the foundation the structure infrastructure they, they they can't go laying people off all the time they have to go slow prove it prove it slow committee committee and have a budget of course the budget gets smaller and smaller and smaller so they have to do robots that's why you see all these robots on mars on the moon and everything because their budget is so small that they can only afford robots instead of space not humans so for SpaceX, they've been able to use that same monies basically and do more with it because they're not restricted. And, and like SpaceX basically has the ability to make changes rapidly. When the, you see uh, the was it SN was it SN twelve eleven that that crashed that landed and blew up, and they skipped 12, 13, and fourteen went straight to SN fifteen right. Mm -hmm. So they skipped all those because that's that's a process they do. They can make those decisions quick. But they lose more. They have more more accidents, for, but no one's dying. They have more accidents, but they're able to make those improvements on the go. Now, the SpaceX has had more failures when it comes to um, launchings and stuff like that, mistakes, whatever. They have more failures, but the the, the pace that they're going is better than than the U.S., better than the Russians, better than the Chinese. The Chinese are trying to catch up, but there's no way they're going to be able to catch up unless they steal it, which they probably will. But SpaceX has been able to, to use that same budget that NASA uses and do way more with it. That that's that's some smart motherfuckers there that are doing this. That's incredible, man, that they're doing that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. They're gonna set up. A, he wants to set up something down in the valley, down near your old stomping ground. You're, you're, it's already there. That's space uh, starbase, Texas. I heard he wants to build a whole city down there. Yeah, that's gonna be hard to do because you have you know MN domain could probably help him. Reads in like a different dimension. Plus. I'm not really sure that's true or not. Maybe you froze up for a second, so I said you were in a different dimension. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so that, that takes a while to do that, but I think he definitely has greased the wheels when it comes to donations. You know, 20 million to the schools down there, 10 million to the city, wow. Brownsville. Wow. And so, Wait. yeah, so the only the only ones that are complaining are the ones who wanted more money for their property. But those people got like three or four times the the, the value of that property he bought. So uh, the whole village of Boca Chica Village. There are probably about three or four people that still live there. One of the people that one of the girls that still lives there, a girl by, by a Boca Chica gal, that she actually does footage for NASA space flight, which is the, the abbreviation of NASA. It's not actually NASA, but it's a bunch of nerds. They they they've hired her to basically run the cameras for them while while they're launching, mm -hmm. and so she lives in Boca, Boca Chica Village, mm -hmm. and she's there helping them. She's a fan, so yeah. like God, I wouldn't want to leave either. But if I lived there, like you're this. Eventually, Highway 4 is going to get cut off to the public, like um, NASA. It's going to happen. But since it's still uh, – there's still – when you go on that Highway 4, when you hit to the beach and you go north back up to the mouth where the, uh, the port of entry is for Brownsville, there's still private individual property that, that belongs to people. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to sell because they probably want millions and millions of dollars for the property, which is understandable. And, I, you know, yeah, you can make a big chunk of change from him, and he can afford it, you know. Yeah. But we'll see what happens. Hopefully that they the only thing that pisses me off is that these people are in a way of getting back to the moon. These people are in a way of getting back to Mars. That's what's pissing me off. Mm. But 
I understand their point of view is like, get as much as you can and be happy and then get the hell out of the way. Because you're going to go work for Elon Musk and go rough up these people. Go if I was, if I was paid enough. Yeah. Go, anyway. go be the kind of, Hey, <laughs> hey you need to, <coughs> you need to get a hell, sir. You need to get the hell like, out of here. You be like this guy shows up and be like, hey, uh, we're going to offer you uh, 10 times what it's worth. And you're gonna I'll send, I'll send you to the moon. <laughs> right in the kisser. Okay. All right. Now in the feed the read segment, Reed Charles is going to tell us about a time when he had superpowers. Here it is. Feed the read. Feed the read. I think you're ready for this, man. Now it's two of me. Look at that. Feed the read. Oh, holy crap. There's two of you. Okay. There it is. Reed Charles tells a story about the time he had superpowers in the Feed the Read segment. Shit, I don't, do do I don't. tell. Oh, by the way. Thunder Pop in association <laughs> with these nuts productions. Got him. All right. Go ahead, Reed. It's all you. Okay, so you know I did Bufo, right? 5-MEO DMT. Yeah, the DMT. Yeah. yeah. And Reed, I, Reed went to a place. Down to a in, church. To it's a church. a church near Houston, right? I'm not going to say the location. Okay. And I went to a church and did Bufo, which is 5-MEO DMT. Um, I died. Um, I was in the presence of God. Uh, when I say God, I mean the law of the cosmos, right? God of the cosmos. It wasn't a female. It wasn't a male. And you're one with it, right? So I experienced that. And I said, okay, now I'm ready for ayahuasca. And now ayahuasca, that is the healing part. You heal, right? And it, it's, it's going to sound really stupid, but this is what really happened. So with this powers that I had, <laughs> I was able to move clouds. I was able to hear coyotes before they howled, moments before. I could feel everyone around me, and I could feel <laughs> I could feel their pain, and I took their pain away, uh, and I squeezed it, I squeezed it, and then I injected love into it, and then I let it go. And that, that's when I discovered, oh, shit, I have love, and um, it's, I know how it sounds. Um, but the, the power of love that I have is never ending. I can never run out of power of love. And so when I gave it to everyone, I was giving it to everybody and giving them love. And I started giving the earth love, right? Give them, and it, I know how it sounds. And so, yeah, that was a power that I had, this power of, of unexhaustible love. Well, you know, the power of love is a curious thing. <laughs> All right. Yeah, no, it was, it's, and so after all that happened, okay, I, I, I'm just fucking imagining things, right? And this was, um, God, this was, yeah, this was Friday night this happened when I was there. Was I, was I in your dream? When you go into the state, <laughs> did you see me? No, no. <laughs> yeah. Did you see it's, anybody you know, like you, everyday people, they, they appear? No, there, no, 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 I, it was, it was none of that. That's the okay. thing too. I, I didn't, I didn't vis I didn't see the vision of mother earth, but that's an uh, interpretation really. What about so, when you later, like when you're home, like the next day, do you feel just a, a, you felt a feeling of just like peace and carelessness and didn't no, care no, about not, the, none of the no, ways not, the world mattered. No, no, not carelessness. No, it's more, I felt sad that, that people, I feel it's there. It's there for you. Remember, I said you couldn't do it. Like, you should do it, dude. And, and you I'm told gonna, me not to do it because I said, no, no, oh, no. I'll try it sometime. No, I'm, I'm, and you I'm were like, being, no, don't do it. No, I was being an asshole. But uh, why, why were you telling me not to do it then? Because you were taking it lightly. That's why. Oh, I and see. This, this shouldn't yeah, be taken I mean, lightly. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, no, I but get I, that. I get that. But I, I would totally want to be there with somebody who was going to do it. And I'm going to do it again. But I, I tell you what, man, it scared the shit out of me. These powers that I had that I discovered because. The, the thing is that people go do ayahuasca, they basically uh, are there for healing, right? Yeah. And so when I did this, you have to, you have to say your intent. Um, one person next to me, a veteran who was, you know, suffering suicide and he wanted to face his demons. Oh boy, did he face his demons. 
And the guy next to me, uh, Indian dude, Pete, he's a cool dude. Uh, he, his thing was procrastination. And the girl, the girl next to him, her thing was overeating. And so when this guy next to me is freaking out because death is dragging him away and he's dying, what well, he's seeing in his vision, they hear it. I hear it. I feel it. And so it, it kind of makes their issues not as bad as I think it is. They can get over it, right? That's kind of the idea. And so the, the, after all that had happened that night, that first night, now this is, this is where I was being a little bitch, right? The, the puking was the main thing that really yeah. bothered me. Yeah. And so I was a little you, bitch about that. Were you still puking like the next day or did the puking? No, no, just, just, okay. just okay. that night, just that night. Okay. So Friday night when I puked, you can't see nothing. It's dark. The only light is from the fire in front of you and everyone's around you. Yeah. And so you're puking, you're, you're basically purging, you're puking in this bucket, you're purging and you can't see nothing. So when I close my eyes, there's no point. I don't want the, the the splash of the vomit in my face or anything on my eyes. So I just close my eyes. But when I did and I threw up, it, I could see black strings and, and black tapeworms like coming out of me. Visually, I saw it coming out of me. I was like, "Oh, what the fuck?" So I'm throwing up this this darkness, this evil, you know, whatever crap shit that was that I was holding on to, whatever it is, anything negative was just out getting out of me. And then I just I felt healing, and I started. I was like. Like I'm good, I'm, so I started basically throwing love at everybody, like helping other people. I was I was pulling their pain. I could feel it pulling from them, and I was ejecting love and letting it go, not holding on to it. And so that happened that first night, and they said, "You want a second shot?" I go, "Nope, I'm good. I'm not doing that again." And then the next day, Saturday, I spent the whole day just basically like going over what the hell happened, these powers that that I discovered, because I think my, my intention was. To discover ancient knowledge that's what i said and i definitely found it and when i told my story to everyone because everyone started talking what they experienced and when i told what i experienced i go i know this is going to sound stupid but this is what happened just like i did here and i told a story two of the girls that were there said holy shit, i felt that i felt what you were doing wow so you're and in a the room there's other people there with you when this no is it's going not on. a room we're out we're out in, we're out in the grass we're out in the grass okay. and with the trees and with nature. Uh, I did notice that there was a uh, mosquito net around us, but it wasn't a mosquito net. It was a shield of some kind. I noticed that because because the visions I had were not – I didn't like – I was tired. I was exhausted. But I, when I crashed out and I woke up, I had no visions. And I was like – I was concerned about that. But all my visions and everything I experienced was in front of me in my own eyes. I saw it, everything in front of my eyes. So when those girls said that they confirmed that it had happened, I was like, oh, shit, what the hell was that? And then Brooke, who, you know, who runs the place, then she said, Mother, I uh, used you as a conduit to help. And I, that just, holy shit, that really just freaked me out when she said that. And so that, that took, I was like, oh, boy. Because, like, like yeah, I, I need some healing too, but I was there to help. And that was, that was, like, and there, I was, I was done. I didn't want to do it that night, and yeah. that that scared that scared me more than dying and being in front of God. And that scared me more for some reason. But the next Saturday night, I did the second shot. I was convinced. Yeah, I got, but I, no, no, I did the one shot. And this time, this time when I when I he's purged, talking about he's talking about the uh, when he says shot, he's not talking about the COVID vaccination. By the way, no, no, that, that not that bullshit. This is some this is real medicine. And uh, yeah, when I did the second, the first shot, uh, this time when this time when I purged, I tried to cheat. You don't you don't cheat, Mother Earth. So I tried taking these uh, uh, orange peel extracts to kind of help help my tummy, you know, calm down. Wow! Beforehand, they, before I tried to cheat. Nope. You didn't. No. Nope. No. Nope. 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 Not gonna work, huh? Nope. No, but you don't. after you after you get over the being sick. There, it, it kind of cools down for a while. You get over that, right? Yeah. But then yeah. this time, when I when I purged this time, I closed my eyes, and this time, it was rainbows. It was color. It was. It felt so damn good. Yeah. And it was, and I saw the same patterns, fractal patterns I saw with DMT with the with Bufo. I saw here, the same patterns were there, and I was like, whoa, just like. Is that colors. what they call it? It's called Bufo. No, Bufo is the, the 5 meo This is ayahuasca, which is an NDMT, okay. which is different. Okay. So the Bufo was the one where you smoke it, you freebase it, basically you smoke it, 
mm-hmm. and it lasts for like 20 minutes. This thing lasts for hours. It's like that's what I don't know when I went to bed. I was exhausted. The yeah, wow. so that that was incredible. But the thing is too, like finding the power, finding that power, the healing power. And the thing is, I, I was shivering, like twitching through the whole night. And and I kept shivering. I was exhausted. My body's just like twitching and shaking. And I couldn't stop it. The only way I could stop it was by tapping right into the in the air and when i tapped i said i need to find the heartbeat of the earth and that stopped it and i was like get the fuck out of here and i stopped twitching twitching again i can feel it uh, it, was, it, it relieved that twitching because i was wow. in heart i was in sync with the heartbeat of the earth it sounds fucking bullshit but no this all this happened this was not my imagination this all this happened every the music is is a key factor, man. Now there's a and document. This, there's a documentary about this, right? That you, oh, you had there's talked plenty. about. But there's, there's one. Plenty. There's one on Hulu. I think you had mentioned. No, that or one's that video. one's Bufo. Yeah, that one's Bufo. That's not the yeah. ayahuasca. That's not ayahuasca. Now you the had Bufo. asked. You had what? asked Justin when you were on last time you were on. And yeah. I had Justin here. Yeah. And he's doing the. He's got the uh, uh, the LED. Yeah. Cool screens. Yeah. And you had asked, could you recreate? Could you recreate your visual experience mm-hmm. in the LED? What about in a VR, like in a real legitimate VR uh, technology? No, they have. There has been people that have done it, but it's not like it's similar to what I experienced. I, I've done the VR when I was at Kevin's. I've done it too with a VR, and I had a. Ooh, you they have do, a DMT. Okay, you did do it. Yeah, I looked at it, but it's like it was pretty cool. But it's not what I. It's kind of similar to what I experienced, but. I would have to basically, because that's where I wrote the trip report in the first one. The trip report from the first one, the only reason why I wrote the trip report was one, to write it, and plus to have an artist read it and probably somehow draw it for me. That's, that was kind of the idea, to make an art piece out of it, to actually yeah. paint, to have a painting, basically. But I'm still working on the second re- trip report on the ayahuasca, and I just wrote from the, from Friday, getting there and, and learning stuff, and then just before I take the first shot, that's why I stopped writing, because I just, I write. It's, it's a pretty powerful thing. It's uh very, very healing. Oh, and dude, talk about like feminine energy, strong, strong feminine energy, like love and healing. And that, that was incredible. It was uh, the bar that Mother Earth set, no human woman could ever reach. It's just incredible love, incredible healing. Like the dude, the guy next to me, man, this guy, this guy was in Iraq, and Afghanistan, and you know, his story was that there was Sniper Team 1, Sniper Team 2, and a tank, right? The tank didn't realize that Sniper Team 1 was up on the ridge. Wow. And with a, co- you know what a coax machine gun is? Yeah. You have a, you have the you have the barrel of a, of a cannon, you have a machine gun that's next to it. It's attached mm-hmm. to the gun. So there is no no jumping of a, it's fucking solid. It's solid. So it shot the guy in the head with fucking seven, you know, big ass rounds, dead. And he saw that. It freaked him out. And it fucked him up and he went back home. His wife caught him with a gun in his mouth. And, you know, he said, you're going to go do ayahuasca. And he needed to face his demons. So it was a pretty, it was a pretty powerful thing, man. And for him, what he experienced, I talked to him, was it on one weekend, like two hours, I talked to him because I wanted to, exp- I wanted to hear what he experienced. And when he said that Mother Earth was there, he was when he was crawling on the ground in the sand. He's remember when I was crawling around in the sand. He goes, yeah, I remember that. And, uh, he said that the uh, like a mother, a mother holding a child. He felt that the earth like was cut, like hold him. Like it's okay now. Like you're gonna be better now. That kind of thing. Like let's have like a baby. Mm. It's like so the earth was mother, and he goes, yeah, like that. Yeah, that's what it was. You know. So it was a. It's a pretty. I, I wish that everyone could do this. It's people will say it's not for everyone. Yes, it is. Well, you know, if they're scared and they're like, for me, I'm going to try the, I'm going to try the VR version verse first. <laughs> yeah, that's a good start. <laughs> a dress rehearsal to kind of tip my toes yeah. in a little bit. I'll try the VR version. And then, yeah. you know, after I'm, I'm done sorting through the other stuff I do on VR, I'll get to, <laughs> I'll get to it, some uh, DM, it, EMT stuff. It all depends on the setting too, because, like I, I know that you know, I've had friends that that do DMT and, and on a weekend or whatever, and I was like, man, that's some pretty, some pretty heavy shit. What you if know, somebody you... like I make myself I spin around like ten times, you know, where to make yourself dizzy, <laughs> then do the VR, 
Would it be? No, no, no. Uh, do breathing exercises. Uh, okay. the, li- the livers, the liver and the lungs produce DMT. Same as your pineal gland, your, you know, third, third eye. Uh, if you do some breathing exercises and you get that, like kind of like a runner's breathing yeah. kind of thing, you get that breathing practice a little while and you start feeling like kind of shaky in the, in the body, kind of, mm-hmm. that, that's, that, that's kind of the effect. And so if you were to do that, to just breathe, take some breathing exercises and you might be able to find some videos like that on YouTube. And uh, then do the VR, and then see what happens. That's some. That's some. That's a. That's a way to cheat it. You know. Did you know you can go into one of these smoke and chill places? Have you? You know these places that do vapes and they sell. They sell stuff for for pothead for people to smoke pot. (laughs) Call them potheads, but anyway, you can go into. I found it from a neighbor. You can go in and buy like these gummy bears here in Austin, in our town, Mm. here in Austin, over the counter, super legal. It's not an illegal substance. Delta three. the Delta three, they make a pineapple flavor. He brought Ooh. me, a cu- he brought me a couple of those. Did you do and it? I, oh, I did. He said, do half first, then see if you're doing okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's like, it's like doing an edible. Yeah. Yeah. Have you done this? Yeah. Of course it's... you're friends with Kevin. Of course you've done that. Hey, shut up. No. Okay. No, no, no. It, I've done, I've done. Joke. Uh, Joke. The, the, Joke. the thing, the thing about the, the CBD because I've done ayahuasca, no, no, no. Because I've done uh, Bufo, 5-MeO-DMT, it has changed the way THC affects me now. It's changed For, it. Like, it, it, does it have a less effect? Yeah. It's, More effect? The, the last time, like, you know, I'm, oh, my back's hurt. I'm going to eat this candy bar. I'm going to eat candy bars, chocolate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, this ain't doing nothing. I a, CBD, a CBD chocolate. Oh, boy, big mistake. I ate the whole fucking thing. And oh, that's too much. I didn't realize what I was doing. And then I was in different, I was in parallel universes and I was trying to get back to my dimension. I couldn't find my dimension. Oh my God. It totally, like, holy, it had to take off work the next day. It's like, God, I, I felt terrible. Like what a, what a loser. But yeah, it's, a, it's, you know, now you have the, uh, the ex governor Perry trying to push uh, psilocybin magic mushrooms for veterans, which is a hell of a damn good thing. I would have yeah. never expected that. That's it. Never would have been. Yeah. I'm really happy for there. that. Mm-hmm. I think that's, uh, I've done magic mushrooms too. I've only done, I need to do more than one stem and in a, in a, in a, like the head and the stem. I need to do more than one. Mm-hmm. I need to do maybe two. I'm trying to find out where your micro dosing is basically. Yeah. But you know, what's the reason, you know, I think the reason is creativity, um, mental health, mental health, you know, anxiety, the thing. relaxation, uh, but like for- this, you know, like this powers, you know, talking about these superpowers, you can, you know, find these superpowers too, but you really have to have internal validation for yourself, have love for yourself. You have to love yourself first, man. You have to love. That's, that's why I feel like I give you love because I love you. I give everyone love because I love them. I, I give love out to everyone and I'll give as much out because I'll never, yeah, I'll never run out, dude. I'll never run out. I have so much love. I don't need to hear them tell me back I love you. I don't need to hear that because I have enough for myself. You know, I love myself. You know, I think every, everyone should should experience this. Yeah. I love you too, man. <laughs> oh, there I go with the split screen <laughs> again. <laughs> There's two. <laughs> Yo, know, by the times. way, by the way, right before the show, mm-hmm. I did a quick like. Let me just shave real fast, and I managed to. You see my mustache? Yeah. Is is under- you got that? You got that sexy? You got that sexy? Well, my mustache. Well, but this one side's a little longer than the other. It's a little. Let's get a marker. Let's get a marker and, and paint, tape, paint it. In. I have one here somewhere that because I, I get this <laughs> gap in my here. And I, I I markered this in sometimes. Yeah, me too. I got that too. And well, I've had that now, since but... since college. Yeah. I've never been able to get that to connect. So sometimes I'll just grow the beard longer, and then I'll just push comb some hair over. You must have to some, cover uh, that to cover that patch. Little Indian blood, man. Yeah, it could be. All right, in this one uh, forty seventh episode, Reed Charles, I got to agree or disagree for you. Mm-mm. I hope I didn't freak you out with that story. That that all that shit didn't happen. No, I'm I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. I'm gonna I'm yeah. gonna consume more information on it for sure. Hey, when you do it, man, you want to do it. It's it's it is expensive, and if you go do bufo, if you go do ayahuasca, in a year from now, I'll go, man. Uh, okay. I'm, once a year is enough for me. So. Okay, that's a deal. Well, I'll bring you with me because I'll need to, you'll be a tour guide. You you've done it. You you're a veteran, experienced in it. I'll do it so again. You, you can help me. You can help me through the experience. Okay, number one, agree or disagree? 
uh, the Scream creator, the creator of Scream. You ever see the Scream movies? Mm -hmm. any, any of the Scream movies? The yeah, Scream creator uh, is teaming up with the Craft star, with 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 a star from the Craft, for a pandemic thriller. And this is going to be through Miramax. I didn't even know Miramax was still a thing, but it's going to be through Miramax. Kevin Williamson has confirmed that he has a COVID nineteen themed thriller mm -hmm. in the works. Now, do you agree or disagree that this people? Don't want to see anything that's COVID nineteen in a fiction movie at this point in time because they've had it with COVID nineteen in real life. What do you yeah. think? Do you agree or disagree with that? Yeah, I disagree. I don't want to see that. So you agree that people don't want to see it? I agree. They don't want to see it. Yeah, yeah. It. yeah. It's just people are. I would think people are tired of pandemic movies because we've really gone through a pandemic now, and it's just too close to home. Is what I would mm -hmm. think. Now, if you want to play devil's advocate on that, you remember back in the eighties. There were a lot of Cold War movies during the Cold War. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So I, the day I after, like, the day after was the day after was the most noticeable. My mom, before. my mom didn't want to see it. That, that scared her. Oh, it scared me. I remember it being mm -hmm. on TV. I'm aging myself here a little bit that I even know about that movie. But yeah, I remember it coming on TV because I was a little kid. But I remember being like, oh, "That's kind of spooky." Was, Cold War was, freaked me out when I was a kid. That was all. I was freaked out. I thought we were going to go to war back in the eighties for like a while, and then when Reagan came in and they had the the, the wall came down, David Hasselhoff sang. Um, yeah, I yeah. felt good. I felt like we were okay. Pepsi commercials. <laughs> everything was everything was good then. Okay, number two on agree or disagree. All right, number two, we got our our buddy in JJ. We trust JJ JJ, JJ Jar Jar Abrams. JJ Jar Jar Abrams. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. <laughs> go, Jar Jar. Okay. Go, Jar Jar. Uh, okay. Go. Go, Jar Jar. He's going to do it. JJ Abrams has no plans to write or direct any of the DC comic movies that he's going to be producing. Good. Do you agree or disagree that this is a reaction to the people's reaction that they had to his movies when he did Star Wars and Star Trek? That maybe he feels like he needs to step away from directing a big yes. IP, IP like this. He it's, a, a, it's, it's a reaction kind of thing. He's reacting to nobody. The guy can never finish a story, dude. The guy can never. It's a mystery box. It's the mystery box. It's the mystery box. What's in the box? I don't. Who cares? Who you liked. Cares? You liked. You liked Lost, didn't you? But he did. But the story. No. Didn't yeah. Have a good it's like again, he could create something and. All right, you figure it out how it ends. I don't know. And he runs away. Yeah. And he did that with all his shows. It's a mystery yeah. box. It's a fucking mystery box. Did you ever watch his alias? He was up with another one of his shows. No, I never, no, no, I did. Yeah, that I did. Yeah. But I, did, I didn't, he, did he end that better? I have no idea. I don't know. I, I, just, I, so he's I, I, I didn't hire... see when I watched that show, there was no audio. I just look I just like looking at the pretty oh. girl. <laughs> <laughs> so I have um, no idea. I have no idea what the story was. Like, oh, this is a pretty girl. Oh, was that uh, Garner? Jennifer Garner? They're doing a new alias, by the way. He's going to reboot it. He's going to do an Apple TV uh, revitalization of that show. What a, what a surprise. Nothing original. Uh, but yeah, so you're saying it's better that he doesn't direct and He's probably. He should just probably... go home and go to sleep. Okay. Well, I don't know about all that, but. Go to bed. I did. I did like, even though it was a, it was the uh, low hanging fruit just to do the way they, what they did with New Hope. It worked for, I mean, with not New Hope. Force, as a 40, 40 and slip. Force Awakens. Dude. Worked, worked for I me. was tricked. I was, I was bamboozled. Okay. Yeah. I was bamboozled and I don't care anymore. But okay. Rise of Skywalker? No, that was that. I it got worse and worse. I couldn't couldn't handle that. Okay, number three on the agree disagree. Okay. All right. So Dave Filoni was interviewed as he's doing promotion right now for the Bad Batch. He's out doing a publicity for it, and he was asked about the next season of Mandalorian, and he said, "Well, I don't want to talk too much on it without John with me." Mm -hmm. But he, but I will say this: I think the force will be strong with it. Let's just say that that was oh. his teaser. Now you watch the finale; you know what happens at the end of season two, correct? Yeah, no, I saw it. when when I real quick when I saw the second and last episode. Yeah, the stormtroopers were being uh, beat up by by Boba Fett. Yeah, when I first saw it on YouTube, I thought it was a fan film. I was like, wow, that's a really good fan film. 
Because it was some good shit. No, no, it was just it was the production value didn't look very good. And I was like, wow, this is a really good fan film. Oh, I see. And then I realized, oh shit, that's actually Mandalorian. And then when I saw when Luke Skywalker shows up, I was like, wow, that's a really good fan film. <laughs> It's like, oh shit, it's fucking Mandalorian. And to me, I just got the impression it was a fan film, which it is, you know. But it just, well, it yeah, funny. those are those I, guys are real fans. Yeah, it was a it's a fan film. It's, it's, like, fan. Oh, it's a really good. I mean, I saw a little clip, and I was like, wow, that's a really good fan film. That's amazing. They should hire these guys. And I was like, oh yeah, it's that. Like, Oops, sorry. Well, you know it's how good. you know how Rodriguez, the episode he direct, directed, Robert Rodriguez, he actually took it. He went with his kids, and they had toys in their backyard. And they, they, he said, let's try these scenes out. And he would have <gasps> them do the scenes with the toys. Nice. So he had nice. Boba Fett's, you know, the ship and the character oh. action figure. And then he's like, let's try this out. And then he would actually choreograph. Because there's a meme of, of this old Star Wars 1970s uh, toy commercial. These kids playing. And someone wrote in the meme, Dave Filoni and John Favreau. Yeah, I, I found, out there. Yeah. yeah, I found that. I put that up there because that, that, that nails it right there. Yeah, Two kids What's, excited it, about doing. It what? turns out Robert Rodriguez really did that. He tits, yes. got some toys out, and that's how you make Star Wars. Let the fans do it. Yeah. You, that's you that's make, pretty good. Well, you let fans, you let real fans make it, mm -hmm. and you also uh, get Star Wars toys. And like you go back, you 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 recreate the experience of when you were a kid. You're basically storyboarding. You're yeah, storyboarding you, in real life. Yeah. You make it fun. You make it. You can make. You can have fun with it. And uh, and by the way, um, burn the notes when the execs send the notes over. Just crumble them up. Throw them in the trash can. It's a risky, and, and, and keep playing with the toys. And yeah, I know it's pretty risky. It's risky for them because uh, there's they got their nuts in a vice. That's know. what happened to those directors from uh, Rogue, from uh, Solo. From, yeah, from Cray Cray KK. Yeah, Solo, a Star Wars story. And, okay, George Jar, Jar, Jar Abrams. Yeah. Our thoughts and advice is going to go to another billionaire. It's gonna it's gonna it's gonna take on another billionaire and their story, and that's the story of Bill Ga Gates. Now, do you know about the Bill Gates divorce from Melinda yeah, did, Gates? Yeah, the okay. Magto have been talking about. Yeah. So let me ask you this: At some point, did you consider looking for Melinda Gates' email so you could slip, <laughs> slip, slip into her her DMs when you heard that she was getting divorced? Did you think about it? Did you even consider it? No. Once a woman hits the wall, there's no point. I mean, she, okay. she's a she's a leftover leftover woman, like the way the Chinese say it, leftover woman. Oh my gosh! Yeah, okay. So, by the way, I should have warned everyone with Reed is that everything Reed says. I will is, speak the truth, sir. He's politically incorrect. To, to I, the team. I don't even know. I don't even know what that phrase means. What are you talking about? I don't know. What anyway, no, she thing. doesn't. She's not looking. There's a picture of her. There's Melinda Gates. I think about you twenty years. Twenty years ago. Maybe. I think you would make a cute couple, and you you would be nope. set. You'd be well nope. set. Nope. I should have superimposed you into this picture. See, you just you don't under <laughs> you don't understand. I want to see. But you know, you would be set up with anything and everything you want if you dated Melinda Gates. There's, you could have anything you want. You could just you know you what you don't just, just demolish the house, demolish you the house you're building. Women, do you? you don't understand. You women, demolish do you? the house you're building and you could start from scratch on a whole new plan <laughs> would be much more elaborate. You don't understand women. That's why. Oh, okay. Well, and by the way, I got it. Okay, so here's my <laughs> oh, here's okay. my thoughts and advice on Bill Gates, other than the fact that I was wondering if you had thought about slipping into her DMs. Now you know no, that she's she's no, available. No, um, no thanks. I think you thought about it for a second. <laughs> I think you thought about it. I don't, I don't completely believe you, but I mean, give it, give it, give it a try. Try to look into it. See if you can find her DM, uh, her email. No, no. Okay. No. Uh, you'd probably end up in a spam folder somewhere, but just okay. So I was, here's the thing. I'm not here to be. Um, I'm not here to advocate. Delicious. I'm not here to advocate pro or anti. For vaccine that's not my place okay but what i will do is i will say that bill gates as a billionaire if i if i could talk if i could have a zoom call with bill gates mm -hmm. like where i could talk to him and i can tell tell him anything i want to tell him in a one-on-one -on -one call this is what i would tell him. the first thing i would tell him i said you as a billionaire there's a lot of people that don't trust you just being a billionaire alone creates a distrust in the everyday Joe on the street. Okay. Would you agree with that? Whether it's that's valid, whether that's valid yeah. or not valid, that's not okay. It's, yeah. But that's just jealousy or ignorance. You know? Yeah. There's that jealousy. There's ignorance there. There's also the, the story. There's the history of whether he with, with windows, 
on whether he had um, created a, a operating system that was purposely vulnerable to where they would have to create a, a uh, antivirus software to so where people would have to spend more money yep. to protect their operating system. Yep. And there, and even if you think it was that conspiracy, if you think it's the other conspiracy, is that he just created an operating system that was vulnerable, then that again makes you not trust him because you're like, well, if this guy couldn't even create an operating system that could combat a virus on its own, how is he an expert in in a vaccine, and go. or in the subject of vaccines and being able to fight a real virus? Well, you okay. heard what 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 uh, Elon said to him about that, right? Because well, how so do you know? Because I make the machine. That's what he said. I make the machines that do the testing. That's what Elon said. Elon, Elon yeah, said he, he makes he makes the machines that does the from testing. From what I understand, it was those months ago, but I remember if I understand it's like the testing like, for the vaccines. Right, for the vaccines or whatever it was. I remember like you know, it was it Bill Gates putting these tests out, whatever, and then he yeah. was talking shit to Elon, whatever, and they're talking smack right. back to each other. And he said, Because I'm the one that makes them. I'm the one that makes the machines, I know. Like, there's something to do with that. I, remember, I didn't look into that, but I heard something like that. I'm not denying that Bill Gates is a genius. He is a genius, obviously. He's a smarter man than any of us will ever be. But here's the thing. Because there's the perception out there, whether it's right or wrong, that he is uh, not... He, there's, there's, a, there's enough people out there that don't trust him that I think he actually does more of a disservice when he goes on TV and talks about viruses and vaccines. So if you're uh, like the CDC, Dr. Fauci, if you're a group that is trying to promote people getting the vaccine to beat the pandemic, I would be on the phone with Bill Gates saying, you, sir, probably we appreciate what you're doing, but you, sir, need to stop going on TV and talking about that because what you're doing is you're keeping more people from actually getting it than you are encouraging people to, from getting it from to actually get it. I would tell them, hey, we, we want someone that people trust. Get me The Rock. Everybody loves The Rock. We'd rather have him on TV talking about the vaccine or get, uh, you know, who's some who's someone else that everybody loves? Matthew McConaughey doesn't have a lot of haters. Let's have, Yeah, let's let's have clowns. Let's have jesters. Well, I try mean, to convince it, you of what to do. Well, make, yeah, your, make your own decision. Man. But the thing is, you get what I'm saying, though. There's a, there's a lot of distrust for billionaires in general. And then when you're Bill Gates and you have sort of there's all these conspiracy theories about you whether look, they're, they're look, justified or not, you the do main, more the main of thing a here, disservice. Look, you've, heard, you've heard of you've heard of uh, uh, what is it Order Twenty Two that this you know yeah it was in Star it was in Star Wars and in Tarkin and, no and no Earth that's Order Sixty Six oh okay 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 so there's a there's a thing there's an Agenda Twenty Two uh, Agenda Twenty Two I think it was called and basically is to basically to taper down the population of the Earth right. Yeah. Now, now, Elon has talked about that too. That in twenty years from now, we're going to see a population crash, and which is probably going to happen. And then I know why it's happening. But the idea is that they want to lower the population of the Earth. How do you do that, right? I don't know. And without killing them, because it's going to look, it's going to look, look bad. Look, you know, optically, it's going to look bad. Because if you look at this thing he was doing, you've seen those little logos, right? You've seen that? No, I don't know if I see this. This is getting into some deep stuff now. I wasn't. Yeah, even, because I was, you, tell, I was just telling Bill Gates to kind of cool down if he wants to help. Yeah, yeah. The UN Charter Article Twenty Two, right? No, there's some conspiracy on that crap, whatever the hell that means. But if you look, if that was the first like baloney conspiracy, like this thing about uh, United Nations Order Twenty Two, which this whole thing is basically to 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 lower the population of the Earth by controlling, uh, you know, females from having babies or whatever it is, sterilization, whatever it is, whatever that conspiracy is about, right? If you look at his logo for his thing, what was his logo? It was two zero two, right? It was the same numbers. Like what? That's so like that's odd. Mm, that's weird. It's, it's very weird. But weird. the, the re, you know the only way you do depopulate a pop, uh, you know where optics look good, and that's what I've been talking about Magto. But the whole when you give women the right to have property. If you have women, oh right, boy, that, no, I'm telling you, <laughs> we're live, man. Do, I don't give a shit. <laughs> okay. Listen to what I'm saying. All right. When you give women education and money and property, they don't want to have kids, and they don't have kids until their thirties, and that's what happens. And look what's happening in China. Look what's happening in China. What's what are the, the what does the Chinese government tell its women? Did you hear that? Have kids when you're you're 25 or 27. Don't wait later. China said that to their women. Because they're calling them leftover women. 
that's a fact. And that's happening in the world right now. In Africa, South America, Europe, especially in Europe, the populations of these countries, Japan is, is whittling away. When you have a population uh, increase of 2.1, you have to have a population increase of 2.1. The U.S. is not even there. We're below that. It's like 1.9 or something like that. Just China, the Italy's like, like, God, like 0.9 or something. The reasons why the, the population would lead on what t- uh, Tesla, Elon Musk is saying, it's happening because this is the cause of that. How do you stop people from having kids? You educate the women, you give them property, you give them money. That's what happened. They don't want to have kids anymore. Mm-hmm. And so this, th- there's this part conspiracy, whatever, wherever it is, this is just a fact. And I, I, I'm just going to say, I don't, I don't agree with that, but. Oh, because you're ignorant to the truth. No, I, I mean, that. I don't. I don't say that. I don't. I don't disagree with that. No, that you're only are... saying you don't agree because you're afraid of what's going to happen here on YouTube. That's what you're afraid of, and that that's 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 your fear, not mine. Well, I already, I already met God, and I already am already you know I met Mother Earth. I'm all love and power. I got that. I'm not worried about the truth. I know where I'm going when I die. I'm going back home, wherever that is. I'm not worried about that. I'm not meanwhile, gonna put myself in harm's way, but I'm not afraid of death. No. Meanwhile, he is in his bunker and he's on standby. I'm on standby. For the apocalypse. No, you know what? I've always this show has always been an open forum. That's for, bullshit. You know for that. people's opinions. No, I don't censor. I'm letting you talk right now. I'm just reacting how I feel. No, you uh, have you I understand your reactions. I understand that. No. No. But here, okay, we'll lighten the mood a little bit. Here's a here's a mm-hmm. Another meme from Bill Gates. He just bought Tinder after he was divorced. <laughs> he got ghosted. He got ghosted by a match, and he just bought Tinder. So <laughs> he took care of Tinder, and he's bought it. So now he owns. He could. He could buy Tinder pretty easily. What is he worth? Like, when, God, he's probably one of the top ten percent of the top ten. Yeah, I mean, he's not. He's not above uh, Bezos and and uh, Musk anymore. He was. Yeah, he was. Yeah, for a long. He time. was for a long time, and he was probably. For years in the top three, I don't think he's he's not top three anymore. Mm-mm, no. Um, well, now he's got a divorce too, so that's going to split things up a little bit. But well, Jeff Bezos is still number one after his divorce. Like that doesn't make any sense. Like, geez. well, no. I mean, she the deal she got, she didn't get as much as you would expect. Smart. There you go. <laughs> but I mean, she got like a lot of people thought. Oh, she's going to get a seat, like a seat on the board. No way. She'll be, no. no. She didn't get half. I thought she got half. No, she didn't get half. She got. Um, she got something, but she didn't get. And then she gave a lot of it away to puppies, <laughs> to sick puppies. Oh my god! Sick puppies, and also to a uh, sloth uh, rescue. <laughs> <laughs> a sloth. Anyway, I just think uh, there's a whole. I didn't want to go off into this whole thing, but it, you, this, there's a lot of interesting stuff there for people should do their own homework, their own research. I will say that all the stuff you were talking about. People should vet that information. You would agree with that, correct? Yeah, go ahead and define it for yourself. You know that everything I say yeah. is from what I've learned over all this time. And if you disagree with it, you're don't invited. Get, I don't to give come, a shit. I'm you're invited shit to come back and and talk about the rebuttal, and you could do a better job than I can about it because that's why I talk about movies and TV and and fiction stuff because I'm not good. Yeah, this, I, I stick. This, you know, this matters. Do ever ever since this, this I stick uh, with the the fun entertaining. No, entertaining, I I, you know, I, I totally get that too, but I'm like. Like I said before, like we're at a we're at a civilization to where we're bickering as, as a, we're in elementary bickering. I'm past that now, man. Yeah, I'm past. I'm no, past there's the, a lot of there's a lot of fuckery going on in the world. Yeah, because a lot of these people they're just. I'm telling you, man. That people people it should be a requirement that people should do bufo. It should be a requirement that you take ayahuasca. Well, it's no, a, I it should be a requirement. I, no, I think I think meditation. I'm, and they're starting to do it more in schools. They're doing yoga in schools. I think meditation to start. I think float tanks should be everywhere. Mm-hmm. I think meditation should be readily available. I think health classes should have meditation and P and physical education classes. They should come. No, me- mental health. This is this is this is a story yeah. that they they say in, in the tribes in, in South America when they would have wars with each other from tribe to tribe, whatever resources, whatever it was. They had ayahuasca like a couple thousand years ago back then, right? Yeah. When they would fight each other and kill each other. They would drink ayahuasca to get that stuff that 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 nasty that that nastiness out of them, whatever demons that they saw, because they, so they could they could basically put be put back into society again. The veterans that that come back, 
the the idea of giving a microdosing of, or of psilocybin is is fucking excellent. The ayahuasca doesn't just work for for, for veterans only; it works for civilians too. All this stuff, whatever. And it's, most of the people that are going through this trauma, right? Like what you're looking for this power. You're looking for this. Like we can have power too. What's this? Things like <laughs> no, you. I think you just need to. Uh, you know, you need to to love yourself. That's the main thing. Find your internal validation. Go and look for for seek health. It's, and and it's very very important that, that people do this. But it's like I found it. You know, I'm in my my fifties and I finally found it. I'm like. That's why. That's the reason why I cut away all news. Cut away all news, which is more lies, <laughs> Luis. Uh, that's why I cut away news. I cut away everything after this, you know, bogus election that we had. This long live the empire. I hope it lives as long as it can because th that was not an election. That was a. That, this is an empire now. And so long live the empire, and hopefully more people do, could do what I, you know, see what I saw and felt what I felt, and they might be able to get their head out of their ass and focus on things that really matter. Would no, you get your Would you no. get your head in in Melinda Gates' nope, ass? No, no, no. Would you get your head? No, nope, get your head in her in her butt. No, no, anything to okay. do with that. No, okay. Do with that. Okay. Um. All right. <laughs> On that note, I know I don't. I don't mean to sound like a downer or be downer. No, no. I'm telling. You, I don't. I focus on things that are more important. Um, happiness. You know, being. You know, just being happy, man. And then, and the main thing is staying away from. Like that's, that's the reason why I don't watch. I don't watch any of this crap. I don't watch anything fiction. Don't care. It has to be nonfiction or things that are cool. And that's all I'm dealing with. I don't deal with any of this baloney that you deal with. I don't know almost, why you have me on here. I almost had an appendicitis yesterday. Did you know that? Oh Jesus! You okay? I had to call. I had to call the doctor. Yeah, I almost oh, had an appendix. Is on, that a, appendicitis. What is with this? That's why I'm on drinking juice. I'm trying to clear out my system. Oh man, well, that's a whole story. Okay. That's a whole story for the next show. No, it's it's been uh, it's been real, man. No, you what? Uh, one thing is, I respect you because you say what's on your mind, whether people are going to agree with it or disagree with it. Yeah, I don't care. You, yeah. you you don't care. You say what yeah. you. There's so many people in the world. Life's too short to be to be bullshitting people, man. Life's that's too true. short. That's true. Life is short. And I, I hey, look, I can disagree with you. Other people can disagree with you, and you'll respect mm -hmm. that. No, yeah, that's cool with me. That's fine, but. That's the, but you can go, you can go, you can find this out. You can do it yourself. Yeah. You can experience it what I've experienced, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'm going to, you know, prove me wrong. You can go do it. You can find it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And there's some things that are subjective. There's two sides to the coin on a lot of, on some of these things. Um, but anyway. Oh, there always is. Yeah. Everyone out there have a good day. Hour, second, millisecond, love, peace in the Middle East for sure. Live long and prosper. All that good stuff. Everyone have a good one. Talk to you later. Good night, Reed Charles. Good night, man. Reed Charles, back in the Thunder Pop Dome. Good night. Let's good pull that. Night. Where's that close out? It's here. It's coming. <laughs> Outro. No, not that. This one. Can you still hear me? Thunder Pop is a Hit the Bricks production. Hit the Bricks! Hit the Bricks! <laughs>